For thousands of years, falcons have been flown around the world in a fairly consistent manner. Playing to the falcon's natural strength, these falcons are trained to circle above the falconer hundreds or even thousands of feet, and when a game bird such as a pheasant or a partridge or a duck are flushed up, the falcon dives hundreds of miles an hour and knocks it out of the air. This is a consistent method that again plays to the falcon's strength. Hawks, however, are very different. There are many species of hawks around the world, and there are many forms of hunting that play to the different strengths of hawks. When a falconer is choosing how to train their hawk, they should consider the species, the game they're going after, and the terrain they're hunting. But one thing seems to be true across the board, and that is hawks do enjoy hunting from a vantage point. From the top of a cactus, a tree, a telephone pole, or a cliff, hawks can survey their hunting range without burning calories. Falconers can utilize this desire that hawks have to see around. Hawks can be trained to fly from tree to tree or pole to pole and to follow the falconer. They can even be trained to fly ahead of the falconer. In this way, instead of flushing rabbits away from you, you will be flushing rabbits towards your hawk. The risk of training a bird to fly ahead of you to a perch is that if you go into an area with phone poles or electrical poles, it will seek these out as a vantage point to hunt from. Electrical poles are very dangerous and could potentially kill your bird. And this has to be factored in when you're deciding how to fly your bird. A very cut and dry approach to flying a hawk is to train it to fly directly from your fist after game. This is a shotgun approach. The falconer and the hawk walk out together with two sets of eyes surveying the horizon. And when a rabbit is seen or a duck is seen, the hawk is released and allowed to pursue. This form of falconry is very rewarding as both the falconer and the hawk are looking for the prey. When a rabbit flushes, the falconer lets out a game call to let the hawk know that something has been spotted. If the hawk sees it first, they go after it on their own. The disadvantage here is riding on your fist. A hawk is not as high as they would be on a pole or a tree, and it's easy for them to miss. Watch this Harris hawk riding on my fist. When she spots a rabbit, she goes after it. She makes a dive, flies back up, makes a second attempt, but can't see the rabbit through the dense sagebrush. A compromise is to sit on top of a hill or a cliff. Then you become the telephone pole or the tree that the hawk is hunting from. With that vantage point, they can see better through the brush or sagebrush and have a higher chance of actually catching something. But you can see this was a miss. Like a good hawk, the red-tailed hawk returns to the falconer and takes another dive at the next rabbit that's flushed that goes up and over the edge. The hawk tries to get some height for a second dive and tries to get some height for a third dive but this was a miss and was too far away. The hawk returned back, and as with all falconry, patience pays off. In this case, the falconer and the red-tailed hawk spotted a rabbit in a perfect condition. The hawk dove from its vantage point and caught the rabbit right over the edge. This is a seasoned red-tailed hawk that was hunted for over 10 years, and this flight ended in a successful kill. But it's difficult to get a hawk to this point. I hope you've seen in all of these videos, the sagebrush is dense. There's a million places for rabbits to run and hide, and it's difficult to take a new bird and to encourage them and help them understand the motivation of, first of all, going after something much larger than themselves, and also to crash through brush this dense. Jackrabbits are large and formidable prey, typically weighing two to three times as much as a red-tailed hawk or a Harris hawk. They're fast, they can kick, and they can hide. So how do we do this? Well, let's take a look step by step at how this happens. A new red-tailed hawk that is only free-flown a few times is brought out into the field. The hood is removed, and the hawk is allowed to acclimate into the dense brush. Now, being this close to brush is not normal for a hawk. So it has to get acclimated and used to these, what are basically miniature trees coming up towards it. The hawk is allowed to look around and then equipment is swapped out. 
When flying a hawk in brush such as this, it's advisable to use slitless jesses. And you see these jesses have no slit or no hole in them to tangle up, and they're shorter than typical jesses. This is to prevent, again, any tanglement in brush or trees that the hawk may land on. When you have a new hawk, and they're full size and they have incredible power, it's easy to think of them as a seasoned hunter. But typically a new hawk has hunted nothing more than small mice. In the wild, when hawks are young, the parents will often teach them how to hunt. They'll take an injured animal such as a rabbit or a large ground squirrel, fly near the nest, and the newly fledged hawks will follow their parent with it. And the parent will drop this animal and allow the babies to catch it. So effectively, the baby hawks are taught how to hunt prey. Now, we're giving them the same opportunity. A falconer can acquire a feeder rabbit from a store, the same kind that's used to feed large snakes at zoos and other facilities. This rabbit is used in this way to train a hawk to make that transition from hunting small animals to having the confidence to chase large animals. We're putting this out in the sagebrush and basically staging a hunting scenario so that the bird will know what to look for in the future. The falconer has an assistant walk ahead beating the brush to simulate scaring out wild jackrabbits. Everything is done to replicate what future hunts will be like. Having people in the field, crashing through the brush with a stick, everything to get it used to. Now the hawk has only seen a rabbit lure to this point and it has chased a furry object but it has not chased a live rabbit and usually they're a bit intimidated by what they see. The hawk sees the feeder rabbit, it makes a dive, but doesn't commit. It's afraid of the sagebrush and afraid of the size of the rabbit. It turns around and lands on a tree, but a second approach is successful. The falconer makes in, and as you can see, the hawk is confused as exactly what it's supposed to do now. It knows instinctively that it's caught food, but doesn't know how to eat it. But with some coaxing and help from the falconer, the hawk begins to eat the rabbit. In Western society, we seem to be increasingly separated from the circle of life. In the old days, people had farms and familiar with life and death. Falconry is an opportunity for a falconer to see the circle of life in action. Every day in the wild, hawks hunt their prey. Whether falconers existed or not, hawks do hunt rabbits, they do hunt squirrels, they do hunt rats and mice. But for a falconer to see this, the first few times is difficult. But one quickly understands that this is part of nature and an entirely natural experience for both predator and prey. It's important at this stage that the hawk is allowed to have a huge meal. Hawks are confidence based and if they face their fears to chase such a large animal but only get a small reward, in the future they will not go after and pursue rabbits ever again. So a falconer is wise to give them a big reward. This is called cropping up your bird. And though a bird should be fed well, it should not be fed so much that the food goes sour in its crop. Sour crop is a very real danger, and a sponsor can help a new apprentice to know how much is too much when feeding a bird. By conducting a couple of well-planned training exercises such as this, where you've built the confidence of your hawk, your hawk will be well on its way to becoming a seasoned hunter.